Hey guys, Dr. Mike here from Out Sounds Periodization, and I have a gym, and it's in my home, and it's amazing, and it's finally finished. Check it out. I wanted a home gym for a few reasons. One, the number one reason is I really like my work at RP. I like making videos for you guys. I love designing the RP Hypertrophy app and the RP Diet Coach app and making all the changes to them. I do a lot of work and I just want to do more work. I'm a workaholic, it's a problem. And anytime I have to drive to a gym, 20 minutes there and back, the nearest gym to me is about 20, 25 minutes away. That's every day. I do six workouts a week, at least sometimes two a days. That is every day, 45 minutes to an hour of driving. I would love to save that time and work more so that I want to just be on my own property, walk 50 feet outside my house and boom, have a gym. When I built this gym, I wanted it to be good enough to have close to optimal workouts for myself and for my wife. This is a 2,500 square foot facility, which is just not that big. I know it looks big in the thumbnail. Thanks, got the video guy. It's not a huge gym, but it has every foundational machine and implement and free weight that we need. And I legitimately have the best workouts I've had anywhere right here in this gym. But also it has curated by Scott the Video Guy and Scott the Video Guy's lighting slash electrician friend and Mr. Jared Feather, the king of good gym lighting himself. The lighting here has been specifically installed to get you the best possible look. And to quote Scott the Video Guy, after a workout he had here, he's like, I don't really look like this in real life. This is all fake. So definitely love the gym for that. I can like have my machines rigged and set up. I'll show you guys in a bit some of the wacky setups I have and nobody changes it. Nobody yells at me. I can train shirtless. I can train pantsless between sets. I like shake my cock around. It's the typical things everyone does at the gym, but for the law and gym policy, they won't let you do that at a corporate gym. At my gym, you can rub your cock all over all the machines. I can use chalk. I can put on any music I like. And that's just, God, it's so hard to beat. Enough, Mike, let's see some cool stuff. Free motion machine costs about a trillion dollars. Once you have one, never want to give it up. Much like a Lamborghini, as a matter of fact. So this thing, obviously it moves up and down. These levers, if I can actually move it, can scale all the way up and down. They can go super sky high. They can arc in and out. This allows you to use almost any cable movement from any angle. I do curls on this. I do free motion lateral raises. I do wrist curls. I can do rowing on here. It's an awesome machine. If you have a home gym and you have some money lying around, I forgot how much this was like $7,000, something absurd. It really is worth its weight in gold, not literal gold, because then it would be like billions of dollars. It's an awesome machine and I love it. I love having it around. Kind of one of the centerpieces of the gym is this whole multi-point rig here. You got pull down situation, you got cable crossover situation and two independent uh, selectorized, you can move these things around. So we have this whole situation going on here and you have a rowing situation here. I also rig my own row here with this heavier stack. This is kind of one of those universal machines here. We got pull-ups here if you wanna do them. It just does a lot of the main stuff. Anything I do with cables pretty much that's not free motion, I do it on here, works super well. The Atlantis lateral raise, superior, dominant, amazing. I love it, every minute of it. Excellent selectorized stuff. We filmed entire series on this machine before. I had to have it. And interestingly enough, because we put it behind this whole setup, it kind of looks like it's connected to everything. Aha, tricks. All right, obviously, adjustable bench. I have two of these. It goes flat, it goes incline. This is a great bench because this thing moves as well. It goes up and down. And what do I use this for? Well, of course, a dumbbell set. And I have everything all the way from five to, what is it, 100 pounds? I don't barely ever mess with that because I use full ramen pauses, so I hardly ever need the heavy dumbbells. We have the whole set. These are awesome. They don't take up a lot of space. It's been a really good purchase. And that's kind of core critical stuff you have to have in any decent gym. Deadlift unloader. Anytime we do stiff legged deadlifts, rows, anything like that. Loading the weights is super easy when you have the unloader. Awesome. Anyone who wants to do deadlifts here, amazing. This floor is 
like, I don't even know, like three feet of concrete beneath it or something. And then a rubber matting above so you can deadlift on it. No big deal. There's no weird, no deadlift rules at the gym. You can do pretty much anything you want. And of course, the Atlantis leg press hack squat situation, also adjustable. You guys have probably seen this before in my other videos. Worth its weight in gold, amazing. And uh, it's just really great to have this much variation. Uh, I have a lot of other leg machines. You will note by the end of this video that I have very many leg machines because legs are important to train. Pendulum squat works just fine. Next. <laughs> the Wenning Strength Matt Wenning belt squat. Amazing belt squat. I love the leverages. I love how smooth it is. I love the adjustments. My wife is a short queen and I'm of course short king and we have to put a lot of pads on here in order to make the leverages better. Now we can actually do this with a pretty decent range of motion without pads, but if we put it on the pads, we actually get the highest forces at the bottom of the lift, the lowest forces at the top of the lift due to the lever arm, and that makes this an even more effective exercise. I didn't, I had this machine for a year before I ever used it, it's just something I needed to have, and then I started using it. Oh my God, slow eccentric pause squats on this, Miracle. I can't recommend this highly enough. Another adjustable bench. This is flat and incline. Good old trusty power rack. You really don't have a gym if you don't have a power rack, in my opinion. And just chilling in here, smoking doobies. The transformer bar from Kabuki Strength. Mr. Christophan is the man. I love the American flag on here as well. And uh, it's just a great bar. This bar allows you to do low bar, high bar, good mornings, all that other stuff. It's got essentially, I think, 24 ways to reposition the bar with these adjustments. And you can even put the bar pins lower or higher. If you have a rack at home and you want instant variety, this bar is an absolutely great investment. And yes, it is expensive, but you get so much out of it, it's totally worth the money in most cases. Rogue bar holder right next to the power rack. Of course, we have a cambered bar. This thing is amazing. We got a few of these straight bars, good for redundancy and multiple people training at the same time. I think we have three of them. And then a long power rack worthy easy curl bar, which comes in handy a bunch. We have another easy curl bar somewhere lying around here. That's a shorter variant and a bit more of like a tricep bar. These are all great. If you have a home gym, and you don't have a ton of equipment, unlike me, but I have a ton, getting bars can be a really cost effective way to increase variation. And to that end, the next thing I want to show you guys is how to increase variation a ton if you have even one selectorized cable stack. Come walk with me real quick. My friend built me a custom bar hangout area, cable attachment hangout area. This is great because I have a ton of attachments. If you have a limited space, which technically I do, 2,500 square feet is not the infinity gym then if you just have one, even just one selectorized cable attachment, you can buy tons of different bars for it and essentially multiply with every new bar. These bars are usually like 20 to 50 bucks. That's another machine essentially that you can use. I can't recommend having more of these anymore at your home gym. As many of these is great. It's just the return on investment is massive. Different grip, different angle, different position, multiplies how much variation you have. It, if you have a limited space, a lot of times you're like, man, that's, they do the same stuff all the time. You won't have that problem if you get a bunch of attachments and holy crap, I have a bunch. I'm always collecting more. Hey, in the comments, throw me some links to some attachments. Maybe they block the links on YouTube. I don't know. Just at least mention the cool kinds of attachment. I do have all the mag grips and stuff already. I have all kinds of different stuff. My favorite one probably of all of these is this red bar. First of all, why is it red? I have no idea. What's the advantage here? It looks like a pull down bar. It doesn't rotate. And if I strap into it, and it's also a thin handle, when I do pull downs or when I do any kind of cable rowing, I can't let go of the bar. My grip doesn't fatigue at all. Immense back workouts. Arsenal leg press. So far as I can tell, best leg press in the industry. And we have the pads here already down. These are precisely the pads I use when I leg press. It's got an adjustable plate even, or adjustable seat. Should be all the way at the bottom for almost everyone. And it's just a great machine and I love having it. This was one of the core things I definitely wanted in the gym. I got it and it's awesome. Oh, <laughs> we're still filming. I was just taking a break in one of my many fold out lifting chairs. This is like a fat person camping chair. Is that politically correct? It's just true. These are great for you doing leg workouts. 
and we just can't stand up anymore. Maybe you don't wanna lay down just yet. Sit on the chair, scroll on your phone. It's great stuff. Two things to show you here. One is the prime leg extension, which is a great leg extension. Allows you to accentuate the eccentric and especially the deep stretch. I think it's great. I barely ever use it because I barely ever do leg extensions, but people who come and train for other reasons here at the gym, they love this machine. And number two, one of the two speaker systems that Scott the video guy set up himself, because we booming out here, baby. I think, I mostly train in silence, but every now and again, I need that real extra motivation, inspiration, that drive, that thing comes in handy. Atlantis row, uh, chest supported row. I just got this recently. They put a bunch of handles on it that I didn't like, so I had my friends saw them off, uh, put some tape over it. It's actually now back to being the best chest supported row I've ever used. I, I love it. And I actually used it in a really weird rigged way before, so I have, I have to, for the first time ever yet to use this new setup after I sawed off all the handles I hated. And I can't wait because I know for a fact that even the way I was rigging it early was already great. Being able to really grab it is gonna be amazing. Prime seated leg curl allows you to accentuate the stretch. Best seated leg curl in business as far as I'm concerned. So I had to have it. And here it is. I use it all the time. I think it's great. Free motion, lying leg curl, works totally great. Unfortunately, I want more stretch at the bottom than it gives me. So I have to put all these things. What I do when I actually do it is I take all this stuff, I move it down so that it's all the way down at the edge here, cover it with this so I'm nice and comfy, get in and do some leg curls. And then what it lets me do is because I'm propped up higher, it allows me to get a real deep stretch in the hamstrings. That's the downside of this machine, it needs to be rigged. The upside is it's incredibly smooth and it's very loadable. I have a gym pin on there for extra weight because I have, my hamstrings are finally strong enough that I've stacked this machine. Yay, science. And by science, I mean pharmacology. Two things. First of all, this is a chalk stand with chalk in it. It is a resident of the gym and always will be. That's the first thing. The second thing is any gyms that don't allow chalk are not real gyms. Sissy squat machine, cheap, I bought it. <laughs> it exists. Prime seated row, my all-time favorite back machine, and I have to own it. I love, love, love this machine. As a matter of fact, after filming this video, I have a back workout scheduled. I'm gonna be on it. I can't wait. Dip stand. This is a very good dip stand because it's ultra stable, has platforms for short kings like myself, and then it has a huge angle to it so that you can grab exactly where fits your body best. A lot of dip stations are positioned uh, totally in parallel. And then it's kind of like if you're a little wider or narrower than the average person, it feels all fucked up. So this is great. Believe it or not, it took me a bit to find this on the internet. They just don't really make these things anymore. Mm -hmm. Nautilus Impact Chest Press. Not in love with it. I don't hate it. I can stack it for sets of 20. Cool, humble brag. Weird flex, Dr. Mike. The chair doesn't go low enough and I'm five foot six. So think of that. They didn't test this on anyone, but it works decently well. The Prime Pullover Machine. It's a very good machine. I'm a little too wide for it, believe it or not. So it feels weird to squeeze into, but uh, the force curve and everything is excellent. I actually have yet to use this machine in any mesocycle since I got it. And I got it late. It's only been here for about, oh, nine months, long enough to father a child with, but uh, I haven't fathered any children with it. Just haven't used it yet, but I will one day. Who won't I? Yes. Nautilus hack squat. It's just good. It's really good. But I am a member of the royal family and undersized. Thus, I am a short king and I need a short king adjustment, which means I got some mats here. And uh, with those, it, it makes everything right as rain. The Atlantis incline chest press. Excellent machine. I love the fact that it has an unloader so you can get really deep. And then if you get pinned down there, you can push your feet and get it out. Lovely machine, excellent, uh, rounds out the gym really well. If you're curious about the ins and outs of this machine, we have a whole separate video discussing all of its merits. And you can find that wherever Scott the Video Guy links. Assisted dip and pull up machine. I love this thing, it's really good. It even has the swivel handles for narrow kings and wider kings. Plenty of different hands uh, selections here. Uh, it's really good and I can't, it just, it works. And an assisted pull-up is something that doesn't even exist at most gyms. 
and it's just an amazing thing. And before you ask, how's the surf lifter pull down? Try it. It is the Smith machine. You guys knew I had to have one. This one's great. It is relatively smooth. The only demerit here is that it seems to get easier at the bottom and harder at the top, which is the opposite of what you want for hypertrophy. But generally, the stimulus to fatigue ratio on this is so good, it's still very good, even though it has that flaw. You guys may be asking yourself a very logical question. What the hell's with this dangling duct tape bullshit? Yes, it is duct tape. You got duct tape handles and these duct tape things. Why? Well, let me show what a high bar squat looks like right now. Okay. All right, I got too big to do proper high bar squats. And whatever bodybuilder you say is bigger than me that can still high bar, amazing. Their flexibility, where do I find their cock to suck on? It's my reality, folks. So I made this duct tape situation so that I could do this and this. And I also realized at some point that sometimes I can't rack if it's a lot of weight. This mechanism doesn't work. So what I'll do if I have over 400 pounds is after I do my last rep, I get out of here. This I put in front. So if I pull down, it racks. It's super easy. This is peak ghetto engineering, and I'm all here for it. The dildo cover. It exists in my gym because my wife and I have some very close friends that live close by, and they use our gym. And one of the friends who shall continue to always go unnamed, as this is a heinous crime, we're admitting, them too, not even a gender there. They wanted to have this because it made them more comfortable with the squat. Ah, I'd throw it down if it wasn't a piece of equipment that someone paid money for. If you ever come over and you see this, that ain't me. I don't stand for the shit. Let me tell you guys about the RP Hypertrophy app. With over 28 preset programs already in the app, you can choose to make your own, you can modify an existing program, or you can just run the programs exactly as they were written by me personally. This app programs everything for you. Exercises, weights, sets, reps, frequency, the whole thing. After every single workout on every single week, the app adjusts to your unique parameters with every single input. We have over 250 exercises in the app with detailed video tutorial links to every single one. You never have to be confused about technique or form ever again. I'm guessing right now you're pretty interested in the app? Download the RP Hypertrophy app today. The mirrors in this gym are actually these really dope mirrors that are on wheels and you can move them around. And I don't wanna to touch it too much, but it's actually a film, it's not a mirror. So it's super light, I can lift it with one hand. Anytime you need to like be doing rows, but you wanna see like your anal cavity while you're doing them, easy mirror setup, you just move it to wherever you need to. This is great for posing shots. You can roll the mirror to anywhere. There are like at least 20 places in this gym that have legendary down lighting. With moving the mirrors, you can catch them anywhere you want. Of course, this isn't one of them because I'd look fucking better if I was in one, bro. And of course, a lane in the middle of the gym that I can lunge. I mean, how? Are you supposed to do walking lunges if there's no lane? So when we designed the layout of this gym from day one, we knew that it was gonna have a lane. And the best part of the lane is that it ends at the exit to the gym. Let me show you guys this. If you're ever lunging, and you rack the weight and you're like, I'm just done with the shit. No worries. You lend yourself all the way to the garage door. Right to the outside. You can kindly leave and never return. What does this gym look like from the outside? Well, it's just a normal building, I guess. And I, I think a, some of the neighbors thought we had a grow house here at the beginning and they called the authorities on us. And I was like, look, I consume marijuana, I don't produce it, that's nonsense. They make it at the store or whatever, as far as I know. In any case, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully the gym tour wasn't a gigantic disappointment as is the rest of my life. If I can reflect on it, the gym building process was really pretty good. Most of the machines I'm really happy with, I do fault myself for one thing. I wish I had tried out 
and handpicked every single machine that was in there. I'm mostly happy with them. Some I had to sell and some extra I had to buy. But really, if you're going to build a home gym, don't just look at catalog pictures and assume that machine is going to look nice. Even if the specs line up, just using the machine will tell you a lot. Problem is using new machines is tough because not all the gyms have them, but it's worth a little bit of time thinking about it at the front end. I had wished I had done that. You won't make the same mistake as you learn from my mistakes. Anyway, all right, time to go work on another Lambo purchase. Peace, homies.